I was born in Brooklyn, and I live in Roslyn Heights. So what inspired you to photograph the cemetery already, or all the way out here? Well, um, Fire Island National Seashore, of which the William Floyd Estate is a national park unit, uh, they had commissioned me to photograph the William Floyd House, the interiors. Uh, they invited me to do that after seeing a project they did for Sagamore Hill National Historic Site, where I photographed the interiors of Theodore Roosevelt's mansion. So uh, the job was really to photograph the interiors of some of the rooms that we're standing in right now. Um, but uh, Chris Olnick, who you spoke to earlier, said, uh, you know, you have free reign to photograph anything on the grounds. So I uh, just took a walk around the grounds. I was my first time in the William Floyd Estate as well. And I was really interested in the slavery part of it too. I noticed that I saw a sign that said Slave Cemetery or something to that effect. So I asked about it. They directed me to the path that would take me there. And the first time I went, I actually did not see the Slave Cemetery. I just saw the Floyd side of the cemetery because it's very, uh, it's very big. There's a big fence around it and it kind of draws you in. Uh, just very beautiful tombstones with lots of carvings. And so I actually didn't even see the Slave Cemetery. Um, later on, when I was nearly completed with the project here, I kept on thinking about that slave ground. I said, you know, I, I can't really finish the project and leave here until I at least see it. So I went back, and, and I have to be candid with you, when I went, uh, I was actually startled when I saw the crosses because I wasn't really sure where to look or where to find them. When I was here before, I didn't notice them, uh, in part because um, there was lots of trees and leaves and, and shrubbery and whatnot that kind of covered it a little bit. When I went uh, the final time, it was in September, so the leaves are already starting to, um, to diminish. There was more, it was a little bit more bare. So then I saw the, uh, the markers, the seven markers, and it startled me. And I just found it very moving. It was just something about seeing it during that time of year. It was kind of cloudy. Um, so the white of the markers really kind of popped out from the drab, dreary background. And then I just started thinking about the fact that there might be people buried in there, right six feet below me. And these are people who worked uh, in this property. And we know nothing of them other than their first names, if indeed those are actually even their first names. And I guess like most people, I like a good mystery. Uh, the fact that there was not much known about it drew me more into it. And for me, I think that's what art should do. I think art should just not repeat what's been done before, but try to draw the public's attention towards something that maybe they don't know about or that needs to be studied more. And so as important as I thought it was to document the interiors of this house, I thought that was a big part of the story that often gets forgotten. It's the other side of the history uh, from my point of view. So I decided to come back a, another time and really try to capture not just the markers, but the way I felt about it. Uh, so I wanted something that was emotional. I wanted something that was uh, poignant, uh, just something that conveyed more feeling than being a pure documentary. How would you describe the way it looks? To me, it looks very sad. It just looks very lonely. There are just seven markers. Uh, they're kind of back towards the brush. Now, I don't know if that was the case back when they were put up. Probably not, I would think. It was more of a plantation, perhaps. Uh, but as they stand today, they're just there by themselves. Uh, it's just a first name. There's no last name. There's no indication of when they were born or when they died, uh, what their relationships are. Who, is, it, is this the mother of so-and-so or the son of so-and-so? When you walk over to the Floyd Cemetery, as you would with any cemetery today, you get all that information. Here you have nothing. Um, and indeed, the names certainly would not have been their given names uh, if they were imported from Africa where they were kidnapped. Or they were born here. Certainly those would not be the names that maybe within the family would have been given to them. So these were names that were imposed on them by their, you know, by their master. So to me, that was just very moving. And I think it's, it's great that, we, uh, that through the photography, I can draw more attention to William Floyd. Many people don't know who William Floyd is. Uh, when you bring up the name, they may think of the highway or the school, uh, but they don't know that he's a signer of the Declaration of Independence. 
So my aim was to use photography akin to the way Ansel Adams, as a photographer, used photography to draw attention to these great parks out west. I'm trying to do the same thing in the east and also other parks throughout the country that are not as known, smaller parks. So my aim was to do that for William Floyd, but I just couldn't leave here without also drawing attention to these slaves as well because they were part of the, part of the story. Uh, Black History Month, we have it so that we can remember and for at least 30 days or 28 days in February, you know, try to reflect on that part of our history. And so I thought that it was compelling to do the same for these slaves at the same degree of, of memorialization for William Floyd and all the good that he did for this country should be counterbalanced with this part of the history as well. What statement do you think the slave cemetery makes? Well, I think it's a, uh, a memorial to uh, that part of our history. It's not something that we enjoy uh, reflecting on, but I think we have to force ourselves to remember it because um, there are echoes from that period that we still hear today and a lot of conflicts that are happening that we read about in the paper all the time. So we have to remember the context of where that's coming from. But I didn't want to just uh, make it a memorialization of, of this larger issue. I also wanted to bring it down to the individuals. I would love nothing more than for folks to come and visit the estate and pay their respects to these individuals. Again, we don't know for certain whether they're actually under there. The archaeology hasn't been done yet. But that's not the point. You know, the point is that there were people who worked here, either as slaves or as paid laborers, uh, not just African Americans, but even um, Native Americans who were employed and worked the grounds. And we don't know their names. Uh, we don't know all about the nature of their work. But without their labor, there's no question that William Floyd could not have the freedom to do the things that he did as a politician and as a general during the American Revolutionary War. So they're a big part of the story. And I think for folks to come and to visit these markers, and they do that periodically. Sometimes I see little stones that are placed on the crosses, and I think that's a wonderful thing. I think school groups should come. I think when you see it, then the history that you read on the pages start to come to life. They're not as boring. They're not as abstract. Now you can equate it with an individual and with a person and with a place. So I think that sense of place is really critical. The family's um, attitude towards slavery also evolves with, over time. Um, they had a change of heart. They did. I think that's another big part of the story. What's great about America is that with all our flaws, we have a system in place where we can change and we can evolve. The photographs I took of the house show the evolution of the house from a colonial structure that was pretty small back in its day to one that kind of grew and expanded. And if you walk through the house, you'll see some modern touches that look kind of unusual when it's next to these colonial touches. That reflects the growth and development of our country, but also reflects the growth and development of the mind. Uh, the Floyds began as slave owners. Uh, actually, Richard Floyd, William Floyd's father, was the first person in Brookhaven to purchase a slave. But then gradually, through his uh, great-grandson, John Gelson Floyd, how interesting it is that he not only fought in the Union side in the Civil War, but actually went to the extent of recruiting others to be involved in this conflict. And if you go to the library, it's a library slash office here in the, in the, in the house, to this day you will see the original Civil War recruitment poster. It's an immaculate condition, but it's hung there proudly. And I think that really says a lot about, you know, that change. And it continues, you know, past the Civil War. If you read through um, some uh, diaries that were uh, entered by different members of the family, you know, you'll see how they were grappling with the issue of slavery. At one point, uh, as is often the case with folks who were involved in this era, they will somewhat romanticize it and try to make it not seem as bad later, you know, almost like slavery was uh, an enjoyable thing, almost something that they were, um, it just wasn't as bad, it was, something, it was like a carefree life for the slaves. Later on, as you get to the 60s, the 50s, even the 70s, you'll see more of a coming to terms with it. 
in, in one case, I was reading something where uh, they acknowledged that it was out and out racism. They were not proud of it, but it was a fact. And they also were grappling with the, uh, the conflict of, uh, of a person like William Floyd and this long uh, family history of being a slave owner, but also being a signer of the Declaration of Independence. So that was not lost on them. And I think it's very, um, I, I think it's very uh, compelling that, that you see this transition, that you see you know, over generations of coming to terms with it. And I think that reflects America in general. I, we have some bad parts in our history, but we also have a way of overcoming it and there's still more to be done, of course, but you know, we're not done yet as a nation.